kindergarten. It's time for another read aloud with Miss Richlick. Today our story is called A Tree for Emmy. What's the title? Yes, A Tree for Emmy. The author of our book is Marianne Rodman. What does the author do? Yes, she wrote the words. And the illustrator of our book is Tatiana May Weiss. What does the illustrator do? Yes, draws the pictures. Great. So remember, as we're reading our books about trees, we're keeping in mind and thinking about how are trees important to others? So as we're reading today, I want you to think about how is a tree, how are trees important for Emmy? our character in this book. Let's get started. A tree for Emmy. Emmy loved all kinds of trees. Oak trees with acorns, pine trees with cones, willows with long swishy branches, but best of all, Emmy loved the mimosa tree in Grandma's pasture. So, kindergarten, Miss Richlick often asks questions while we're doing our read-alouds. But, did you know that you can also ask questions while we're reading? When you ask questions during a story, it helps you understand what's happening better. So, I'm noticing that there's a, the setting of this page is in grandma's pasture. So what questions could we ask about the setting to help us understand better? Yes, we could ask, where is grandma's pasture? We could ask, why does she have trees there? That might help us understand better. Great, so keep that in mind. You can always ask questions during a read aloud to help you understand the text better. In spring, Emmy swung from the tree's strong, low branches. Look at me, she shouted. I'm a possum swinging by my tail. I declare, Emmy, said Grandma, that old tree is a lot like you. Stubborn and strong and a little bit wild. In summer, the tree was covered with fuzzy pink blossoms. Emmy put one blossom over each ear. Look at me, she called. I'm a fuzzy bug with pink buggy feelers. Wow, she's got great imagination. In the fall, the tree's seed pods covered the ground. When Emmy shook them, the pods rattled like maracas. My tree, my tree, my beautiful tree, Emmy sang. She danced around the pasture, shaking the pods, stubborn and strong and a little bit wild, just like me. Emmy's yard didn't have a mimosa tree. It had willows and oaks and pines. They're nice, Emmy said, but they're not stubborn and wild. They're not like me. So I'm wondering what questions could we ask on this page to help us understand the story better? What questions about the characters? Yes, you could ask, is that Emmy's dog? Who's this little girl in the sandbox? Is, why is she in the story? Those are all questions you could ask to see if you can understand the story better. So does this text give us the answer to those questions? Does it tell us who the little girl is or who the dog is? No, it doesn't, but maybe we can guess to see. Who do you think the little girl is? It could be Emmy's little sister. It could be her cousin. It could be her neighbor. 
Who do you think the dog is? Yes, it could be Emmy's dog. Let's see if we read and find out. Emmy's birthday came in the summer. I want a mimosa tree for my birthday, she said. What would you do with it? asked Mama. Love it and water it and play with it, said Emmy. Okay then, said Daddy. Let's go buy a mimosa tree. But buying a mimosa tree was not so easy. A mimosa, said the man at the garden store. We don't have any of those. Why not, asked Emmy. Mimosas grow wild. We don't sell them. Why not, asked Emmy. You don't buy wildflowers, do you, young lady, said the man. Stores don't sell dandelions and clovers. Clovers and dandelions are pretty, Emmy said. Emmy is stubborn. Sorry, said the lady at the next shop. No one sells wild trees. But it's going to be my birthday present, said Emmy. The lady smiled. We have plum trees and peach trees, sweetie. They will give you a nice fruit. But they don't have fuzzy pink flowers, said Emmy. Here's a tulip tree, said the lady. It has lovely pink blossoms in the spring. Are they fuzzy? asked Emmy. No, said the lady. Do they have rattly seed pods that shake, 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 asked Emmy. No, said the lady. Pink fuzz and seed pods make a dreadful mess. I'm sure your parents wouldn't want that. We want what Emmy wants, said Daddy. Come on, Emmy, we'll find you something else for your birthday. Uh-oh. I don't want something else, said Emmy. Mama hugged her. I know, honey, but we can't find your tree right now. Just for today, could you visit Grandma's tree? I guess, sighed Emmy. At Grandma's, she ran straight to her favorite tree and gave it a hug. Dumb old store, said Emmy. No mimosas, no fair. She flopped down under the tree and squeezed her eyes shut to keep in the tears. Uh-oh, Emmy's feeling some feelings. I wonder what she could do. Yeah, she could do turtle. Maybe that would help her use some kind words. Something touched Emmy's nose. She opened her eyes. A big weed was tickling her face. No, it wasn't a weed. With that long stem and those feathery green leaves, it looked like, wait a minute, <gasps> could it be? What do you think it is? Let's see. <gasps> it was a mimosa tree. Emmy ran to get mama and daddy and grandma. My, my, said Grandma, peering down. That's a mimosa, all right, a baby one, but a tree all the same. Can I have it, Grandma? Begged Emmy for my birthday, please. Why, surely, said Grandma. So Grandma and Emmy set to work. Carefully, they dug up the tiny tree. Emmy wrapped the roots in wet newspaper so they wouldn't dry out. Then they put the mimosa in a big tomato can for the trip home. Emmy scouted the yard for a special place for her tree. Under my window, she decided so I can see it all the time. Emmy and her parents <coughs> dug a hole for the little tree. I can't wait for fuzzy pink flowers and rattly seed pods, said Emmy. When will that be? Emmy, honey, it's just a baby tree, said Mama. It won't have flowers or pods for quite a spell. <gasps> it won't, said Emmy. No, said Mama. No fair, yelled Emmy. Dumb old tree. She ran to her room and flopped on the bed. She buried her head in her pillow and wished for a tree like Grandma's, stubborn and strong and tall. 
Well, I think this is a really good time for Emmy to maybe try turtle. I feel like it might not have made her parents feel so great that she said those words. So maybe she could do turtle to help her calm down. Let's see what she does. Vroom! Emmy sat up and looked out the window. Daddy was cutting the grass. Soon he would be outside her window. She ran outside. Daddy, she shouted, waving her arms. <gasps> Daddy turned off the lawnmower. My tree, said Emmy. You're going to mow it over. Hmm, said Daddy. You mean the dumb old tree? Emmy looked down at her tiny tree. Well, it can't help being small. It will grow someday if I water it and love it and keep it safe. So I'm noticing Emmy's feelings have changed. Maybe she did turtle to calm herself down. How does she feel about the tree now? Yes, I think she likes the tree now. She's not using unkind words about it anymore. And she's saying that maybe if she gives it love, it will grow one day. Let's see. I suppose so, Daddy said. Why don't we build it a fence? So Emmy and her daddy made a stick and string fence all around the tree. Now it can grow, said Emmy. Till then, I can pick pink blossoms off Grandma's tree. But someday soon, Emmy knew her baby tree would grow up tall, stubborn and strong and a little bit wild, just like her. The end. Wow, Emmy had a lot of feelings in this story. So I'm wondering, what was this text mostly about? Yes, this text was mostly about a little girl who wanted a tree for her birthday named Emmy. Great. Why was the tree so important to Emmy? Hmm. Keep that in mind. You can tell a you can tell someone in your house, your brother, your sister, mom, dad, any member of your family why was the mimosa tree so important to Emmy? All right. Great job reading with me, kindergarten. I will see you tomorrow for our writing lesson. And don't forget to take a picture or video of yourself reading and send it to your teacher.